let's get a little more touchy-feely about jitter. It's all well and good on the scientific side, but what does it really do to your audio? We all know that we don't like it, but sometimes it's not obvious why we don't like it. The first thing I always look for is, are people's toes tapping when they're listening to the music? If their toes are tapping, it actually is a sign that, that there's lower jitter going on. It's a sign of lots of other things, don't get me wrong, but it's important to have the music flow exactly right, and we somehow can feel it. Now, it's just touchy-feely crap, who cares? It's just, I know that it works, it helped me, it helps you, I don't, or not, I don't care. But another thing that jitter does is it, it messes with the timing, and you know, if the timing's a little earlier or a little late on a 20 hertz bass note, we can't tell, our ears can't tell, a lot of equipment can't tell, because when does a sine wave start on a, <laughs> on a 20 hertz? <laughs> it doesn't matter a lot, but it matters more in the high frequencies. To me, when I listen to a lot of systems out there, especially the early computer systems, you could tell them when they were seeking off the floppy, when they were reading off the disk, when they were doing some of the computing, because the high frequencies sound just a little noisy, perhaps? Maybe like a little bit of a mistuned FM station? Uh, just maybe a little sense of unease. Things aren't quite right. And sometime, if you are around an old system, have them do something on the computer while you're listening to some of your favorite music. Have them stop doing it on the computer while you're listening to your favorite music. And the only possible difference there is, well, is there some electrical thing in their power supply that's messing everything up because they're doing something? Well, that causes jitter. But it might also cause electromagnetic interference. Well, if you use a toss link, that gets rid of the electromagnetic interference, and what's left is jitter. So often I can go in a room and not like the jitter, and nobody else notices what's going on. I'm not saying I'm magic. I'm saying I'm listening to it for a long time. If you got too much jitter, you won't hear that cymbal dying away in the middle of the next timpani hit. It's still there. It's still in the music. I'm amazed at what's on a CD. A mere little plastic disc. There's an amazing amount of music there that you just don't notice if there's too much jitter. So the other things, the ear is extremely sensitive to cues in time to tell you where things are at and cues in frequency. For example, the head doesn't shadow low frequencies at all. It goes all the way around you. But a high frequency will be completely masked by your head. And our brains tell, oh, high frequency is louder here than here, so there's something coming from there. This is true for any angle for high frequency sounds. And, and jitter can mess up the timing enough that things get a little fuzzy in space. Some people talk about how solid the image is. You know, if it's if every single instrument's in exactly the right place. Well, there's one thing if it's in the right place horizontally, that's the timing channel to channel, and other room cues like the loudness of the highs versus the loudness of the lows. But there's also front to back, and we all understand that to some extent. The less jitter you have, the more precisely things are front to back. So when you, when you walk in, you just have a bigger sense of clarity, perhaps a little less muddy sometimes. But to me, you know, everything's in its right place, you feel more like you're there, and the lower jitter you have, the more, the more you feel like you're there. In fact, let me digress just a little bit. This is also true. You know, a good player with a good CD will sound really good. You play it on vinyl, it can sound better, perhaps. Play it on SACDs, it might sound better than the CD. And a lot of that is just having more cues for the brain to know where everything's at, and everything gets just a little more solid. You know, you can have identical frequency responses. You know, any way you can measure it, they sound pretty much the same, but that extra information is actually letting you pre place things more precisely, give you a solid, more realistic thing to listen to. And jitter is one of the things that can mess that up like nobody's tomorrow.